This past April 15, our favorite image preprocessor and denoiser, DxO Pure Raw 5, was released. In this video, we'll be running through all the new features and telling you whether it is worth the $80 upgrade. The first new or improved feature is the improved user interface and navigation. While the previous Pure Raw 4's UI was not a problem by any stretch, interestingly, DxO has still made a lot of effort to improve Pure Raw 5's user interface. According to DxO, the appearance of the user interface has been completely overhauled to give a cleaner, more refined experience. So let's run through the main improvements of the user interface. The first UI improvement has to do with the sidebar, which is now narrower and less distracting. Compared to Pure Raw 4, you can see how its sidebar was much too wide, taking up too much space from the image viewer. You can now also hide the sidebar, which you could not do previously. A second user interface improvement has to do with the bottom thumbnails, which you can now toggle in size as well as hide. The third UI improvement is new widgets. Pure Raw 5 has now added both a metadata viewer to help you easily view shooting settings and a navigation widget to allow for easily inspecting any area of your image. The fourth user interface improvement is a new toolbar which allows for quick access to three settings, image corrections, local adjustments, and output. As a reminder, Pure Raw 4 only had one sidebar and that included all the settings. The fifth user interface improvement is in its image correction settings. You no longer need to click any button to view denoising sliders as you would need to do in Pure Raw 4. The sixth UI improvement is a more prominent back to light box button. Previously, this button was really small and was hard to notice. So those are some of the user interface and navigation improvements in Pure Raw 5. As you can see, it really is an overhaul compared to Pure Raw 4. The second improvement is a new denoising model. The new model is called D-Prime 3 and succeeds D-Prime XD2S, although that previous model is still available as an option. DxO calls D-Prime 3 its third generation denoising and demosyking engine. According to DxO, D-Prime 3 incorporates a third process which corrects chromatic aberration to further improved image quality. So let's check out a few comparisons to see what kind of improvement D-Prime 3 really provides. Looking at the first image, you can see that while the D-Prime 3 noised image does retain more detail in the shadows, it does so at the expense of more noise. This looks to me like D-Prime 3 is just simply more conservative in its denoising rather than showing an overall improvement in performance. Usually, improved denoising would show results characterized with both less noise and more detail. Looking at a second image, you can see the same result. D-Prime 3 produces an overall more detailed image, but also far noisier than D-Prime XD2S. Looking at a third image, to my eyes, there was virtually no difference between D-Prime 3 and D-Prime XD2S, and this is the result I got for most of my tests. Looking at a fourth image, you can see once again the output looks virtually identical. So with these results, I would conclude that D-Prime 3, despite the name change, and being referred to as third generation only provides a very incremental improvement to XD2S and that's being really generous as for most of the tests, the results looked identical. The third improvement is local adjustments. This by far is the more impressive update in Pure Raw 5. For the first time in any AI denoiser, at least that I've ever used, you can now apply different levels of denoising to different parts of an image. This is a game changer for people who are extremely picky about denoising quality. To demonstrate, let's denoise this image. As you would expect, Pure Raw's results are excellent, able to remove grain while maintaining important detail. On the other hand, looking closer, one might criticize the grass for looking unnaturally smooth, although the sky and building might seem fine. In previous versions, your only choice would be to lower the amount of denoising, which would affect the entire image, 
accepting the downside of introducing extra noise in the buildings and sky. Well, in Puro 5, with local adjustments, this compromise no longer needs to be made. To use local adjustments, I'll click on the tool from the toolbar, and that brings us to the local adjustments panel. As you can see, a default layer is already created. Next, I'll add a mask, which you can do via brushing. I'll paint on the grass. I'll lower the luminance value. And as you can see, we've reduced the noising to just the grass, nicely bringing back its texture while excluding the rest of the image. But that's not all. You can add even more layers. I'll click the New Layer button. I'll paint on the building. I'll reduce the luminance. And there you go. We've applied a different level of denoising to a separate area in an image. So hopefully you can see now how with local adjustments, while it does take extra work, you can get far superior image quality than a one-size-fits-all approach. So there you have it, three improvements in DxO Pure Raw 5. Is it worth the upgrade? I would say yes if you plan to use the new local adjustments tool in your workflow and appreciate the unmatched control it provides. On the other hand, I would say no if you only plan to use global adjustments as its latest D Prime 3 performs virtually identical to the previous D Prime XD2S. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of DxO Pure Raw 5. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.